Hey there, it's Bright Hawk, and I'm delighted to open Storytellers Connection, where we connect through the art of story. It's my pleasure to get to share this time with you, and I'm so grateful that you've chosen this time with me. A story, a story, let it come and let it go. Now this is the story of once upon a time in the land of the Emerald Isle, the land of Ireland. There lived a mother and a child in the countryside and theirs was a simple life, but nature provided all they needed. They had a farm that grew some of the most beautiful herbs and flowers and vegetables in the area. And the mother and child, they worked together. And while theirs was a simple life, nature provided everything they needed. And the mother tried to do the best job they could to instill the values of appreciation and gratitude for nature and the good green earth. And of course, to respect the ways of the little people, or to go against the of the fairies is to go against nature itself. And, well, that's a very plump bull thing to do. Well, at any rate, the child's name was Sean O'Sullivan. And Sean O'Sullivan was a good child and was of the age of, well, want and more. You know the age, want and more. Believe in someone else's pastures are greener. Believing that if life could be just a wee bit easier. And Sean O'Sullivan began to fixate on wanting more. Now, the mother and the child, they grew some of the best herbs in the countryside. And they provided the herbs at the market on the weekends. They would gather up baskets of all kinds of beautiful herbs. And all the healers were grateful for their medicine. And they were known for doing special deliveries and helping out in whatever ways they could. And it was when on one of these deliveries that Sean O'Sullivan arrived at Bridie's cottage, an elderly woman who lived at the edge of the village. And Bridie was known for making wonderful medicines and welcomed Sean O'Sullivan in for a cup of tea. And this time... Instead of telling Bridie about the neighbor's pig or what was flowering, Sean O'Sullivan was going on about wanting more, wanting a wee bit more gold, a wee bit more treasure, a few more things. Would it be such a bad thing to have a little bit more? And Bridie looked over Sean O'Sullivan and said, Is it bad to be wanting more? Well, it really be. What should be wanted more for? What's your motivation? Happiness, gratitude, satisfaction, joy, these things come from within, and I'm afraid you're losing sight of that. Now let me see this basket of herbs you brought. Oh, good, I see. You brought me the echinacea, wonderful, and the dandelion. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, I see the lilac and the lavender. That's great. Hmm. I mentioned to your mom. The Galengo flower. I don't see it. And Sean O'Sullivan looked down. Well, I guess I could go gather it for you. The Galengo flower is a rare and special flower. That's a half day's journey on the slopes from the cottage. And the Galengo. Well, Bridie looked at Sean O'Sullivan. 
I'll make it worth your while and put a bag of coin on the table. Shana Sullivan winked at Bridie. Very well, tell Mum where I've gone. And with that, Shana Sullivan was headed north to the slopes where the Galengo flower grew. And when they got there, they immediately began to gather up one bunch of Galengo, two bunches, three bunches, without ne'er pause at all, four bunches, and then one more bunch. And now, just looking about, had a little pang of a thought. Maybe it was too much. Mum would never approve. But never mind, dismiss the thought. And with that, they were off, as fast as their feet could carry them, with a heavy gather sack on their back. And after a bit of time, Sean O'Sullivan decided to take just a little bit of a break and was eating an apple at the base of a grand oak tree. And before you knew it, Sean O'Sullivan took a wee bit of a nap and began to dream of gold and treasure, how it'd be so lovely. But suddenly, the dream turned dark and stormy and there was nothing growing on the farm, and the mum was weeping by a cold fireplace. And Sean O'Sullivan <laughs> suddenly awoke and took a deep breath of cool evening air and heard Tink, 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 Tink. Curious. About what the sound was and where it was coming from, Sean O'Sullivan stood up at the base of the enormous big oak tree and looked around the bush at the base of the tree. And on the other side of this bush was a little one with a green velvet coat and a top hat and high boots tapping away a wee pair of boots muttering to themselves those greedy humans always after my pot of gold I try to heal them from their sickness and still they persist always the same old story shaking me down for me gold they get it and then they're miserable over and over. Why do they always be wanting more, more, more? And just then, the leprechaun looks up and sees Sean O'Sullivan looking down. Why do you always be wanting more? And Sean O'Sullivan responded, Because more is better. More is always better as if stating the obvious. Oh, you humans. Don't you understand? The reason why I carry the crock of gold is because it doesn't mean anything to me. You humans, you put a value on this yellow coin that doesn't exist and then it makes you crazy, it makes you mad. Well, I got news for you, human. I got no gold. I was shaken down yesterday for it. I got nothing for you. Sean O'Sullivan quietly sits down on the root of the oak tree. Sorry. Instantly, Sean O'Sullivan thinks of the slopes of the Galengo flower realizes they for sure took too much. And the leprechaun looking at Sean O'Sullivan knows all instantly. Why'd you take too much? Why did you take more than you needed to? The plant won't survive if you take too much. Hey, aren't you the child that took too much honey from the hive? I see you're still learning. Fairies will not take kindly to the disturbance you've created. 
Sean O'Sullivan is taken back, his breath taken away. The dream, is that what's coming to pass? Well. And then Sean O'Sullivan added, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do? Please forgive me. Well, I'll be. A human that actually apologizes and tries to take some responsibility. Well, that took some courage now, didn't it? Well, you know, the little people, they love your mom, but they're going to be very upset with you. The only way to make right by the fairies is to entertain the court. And I see you have no instruments. Uh, I can whistle. Well, whistle you shall. Whistle for your life, Shauna Sullivan. And must follow my instructions completely. Do you understand? And Shauna Sullivan obediently nods his head. You see these wee boots? They belong to the fairy who's leading the dance tonight. You must not be seen. Learn their music. If you can entertain the fairy court and the queen, you might have a chance. Sean O'Sullivan followed the fairy back to the fairy mound where the dance was beginning. The music began. Sean O'Sullivan began memorizing the melody. And at a certain point after a bit of a dance, the musician stood up and said, I'm tired. Don't want to play anymore. But the rest of the fairies, well, they protested greatly. We want to keep dancing. Sean O'Sullivan's moment had arrived. Through puckered lips, they began to whistle the fairies' song. And the dance continued until the sky began to change. Happy and exhausted, collapsed in the morning dew. And the first to speak was the queen. Well, oh, what human learned our music. You've entertained us well. And hiding behind the bushes was Sean O'Sullivan, who very carefully came out and gave a low bow to the queen. And your actions earlier nearly unforgivable. And soon, all the fairies, up in a flight, listening to each other, gathering a plan. And when the fairies landed again, the queen spoke. Here's the plan. We've decided. If you are willing, and Shanna Sullivan said, Oh, I'm willing. I'm so very sorry. I finally see. There's a problem with wanting more. Please forgive me. And with that, Sean O'Sullivan surrendered the harvest sack. Out came all the bunches of Galengo. And they gave back three bunches to Sean O'Sullivan and said, For the healer. The rest was given to three fairies who flew away and took it back to the slopes from where it began. Then, another fairy arrived with the bundle. And Sean O'Sullivan was told, You must plant the saffron flower in your garden, and no one must know where it came from. You must never disturb it or pick from it. And then, said the queen, the last instruction, you have learned our music, and now, whenever you go out to harvest, to pick, to enjoy any of the fruits and the bounty of the earth, you make sure, you say thank you, you show your gratitude, you hum, you sing, you say thank you, you do something, and in that way, 
the abundance will continue. Do you think you can do that? Yes, yes, Sean Sullivan. I, uh, I, I, I. And with that, Sean O'Sullivan was off back to Bridie's cottage. And when they arrived, they delivered the three bunches of Galingal flour. And Bridie, of course, invited them in for tea, and Sean O'Sullivan refused. Politely said, no thank you. But did take the coin. And with the bag of coin, Sean O'Sullivan headed straight to the center of the town. And looking around, spotted what they were looking for. And went over to a crippled old man and put the bag of coin in their hand and patted him on the shoulder and said, may you never be wanting for more. And with that, Shauna Sullivan headed back to their farm. Not wanting for more. Grateful. Grateful for the farm. Grateful for the love of their mum and their dog. And grateful to be able to enjoy all the beauty and richness of the good green earth. A story. A story, let it come and let it go. Well, hey there, it's Bright Hawk. It's fun to share a story that I created with my partner, Hollis Taylor, and celebrate the Irish spirit, my ancestry for sure, which is the only reason why I feel like it's appropriate and okay for me to use the brogue. I love the lyricism in the Irish language and... um. Yeah, it's it's a careful thing these days doing any kind of accent. So because it's part of my ancestry, it felt like I could go for it. I hope you enjoyed that story. March is definitely a time when we celebrate St. Patrick's Day and Irish culture in some way. But if you have ever looked beyond the veil of what St. Patrick's Day is about, you'll know that a, they don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, that the story of St. Patrick is another one of those, uh, the more you know about it, the more the less likely you are to think it's a great thing. And uh, St. Patrick, of course, has, is not Irish, is not from Ireland, and it, in a one-sentence word, is known for chasing the snakes out of Ireland. But if you know what that means, it means that he was chasing the Celts. The Celts, the people who are the the tribal indigenous folk that lived in Ireland. And he, of course, was there representing Italy, Rome, the Vatican, and brought Christianity to Ireland. So um, it's another one of those stories where you realize that the what we've all sort of been taught in school and the Hallmark holiday part of it has very little to do with the origin story. And I was asked to do a story uh, on a, I was doing a show on St. Patrick's Day some years ago and was going through my many books that I have with Irish stories. And I got fed up. <laughs> with one more story about, um, well, I wouldn't even go into it. It was just a version of a version that I, of stories that I didn't care to tell. And so there were bits and pieces that we did enjoy, and so Hollis and I decided to create the story we wanted to hear and the story that we thought would be fun. And so, of course, having a story about an herbalist mother and child seemed perfect, 
and having a message of a simple message of um, all of us remembering that the earth provides for us in so many ways and the simplest thing we could do is say thank you so it felt like a fun story to create and to create together and i'm delighted to share it with you i of course enjoy being able to celebrate all cultures around the world, but particularly my roots in this story. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's story. It was a fun story to create. And remember, when you're creating your story, think from the end. What's the call to action you want to create for your listener? In our case, it was as simple as remembering to say thank you when you pluck or pick something from the earth. The call to action can be as simple as that. Thinking from the end makes it really easy to know where you want to land. The second thing that I would say for tips and tricks is make sure that you resonate with people's higher moral values and convictions. We felt like gratitude, appreciation, the recognition that the earth is an abundant living, growing thing is a worthwhile message. So how could we create a story around those values? It's pretty simple, actually. And people feel that. They don't want to know about how much you know. They want to know about how you feel. And the story, I think, has you feeling the feeling of what it's like to want more. We've all been there. We've all been at that age. We know what that one feels like. And we've all probably had the realization of sometimes more is not better. And that feeling of satisfaction has very little to do with gold. So, um, so appeal to, you know, speak to your values, speak to our values, and we will resonate with that. People feel that, and I think they're glad for So those are a few tips and tricks for this week's Storytellers Connection. I'm Bright Hawk. It's been a pleasure to share with you. We now have our podcast available on all the different platforms. Thanks for sharing and liking. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to hearing your stories. Storytellers Connection where we help each other tell better stories.